Alex Pashov, and I'm a director of Crystal Touch Bell's Palsy Clinic. Our clinic is located in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and we are specialized in rehabilitation programs for the patients who are suffering from residuals and complications of long-standing facial palsy. Quite often our patients uh, tell us that when facial palsy happens, it's very difficult to find information on the internet. It's pretty much fragmented and often controversial. So we have decided to make this video in order to share with you our experience, our knowledge and to consolidate information and knowledge about what happens when facial palsy occurs, what to do, what not to do and what to expect for the patients who are confronted with acute facial palsy. Facial palsy, which is unilateral paralysis of facial muscles, happens when the nerve, facial nerve that connects the brain and facial muscles sustains damage. This damage often happens when the nerve is subjected to compression. And compression in its turn can be a result of swelling of surrounding tissue because uh, the facial nerve runs here in the, in the temporal bone in a very long and curved channel where it is quite vulnerable. So if the swelling happens, nerve sustains compression. If uh, bacterial infection or viral infection is also there, it can lead to compression and also to damage to the facial nerve. There are two possible scenarios for the recovery after facial palsy. The first more light, more favorable uh, prognosis will be if the damage to the nerve was only superficial. And the second more lengthy recovery will happen if the damage to the facial nerve was more severe. <coughs> Let's take a closer look about, uh, at these two possible scenarios. If the damage to the nerve tissue was only superficial, then the electrical insulation mean sheath can be re recovered, restored quite quickly and we can expect that the facial movements will return within from two to five weeks completely, it will be full spontaneous recovery and the functions of facial muscles will be as before. Less favorable scenario is when the nerve sustains a more severe damage. Uh, we can compare a facial nerve with a thick telephone cable which uh, consists of many 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 insulated wires. <coughs> so when only the insulation is damaged is the first uh, case of damage, more light, and when the second more severe damage happens then not only the insulation becomes damaged but also a so-called wire which is, uh, has a name axon. Uh, it is a nerve fiber also becomes damaged and the brain loses physical connection with the facial muscles. There is no more wire that connects the brain with the face. So, of course, uh, to recover this kind of damage, to restore this kind of damage, takes much more time and also takes more resources from our body. Depending on what kind of cause has resulted in facial palsy, the prognosis for recovery, for quick recovery, may be more or less favorable. To the more favorable uh, situations, we can uh, consider the classical Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is essentially a diagnosis of exclusion. When no particular cause can be established, then the uh, functional disorder gets the name facial palsy. A more severe cases of damage, to which belongs ramsey hunt syndrome, which is uh, related to a herpetic eruption. It can be also a tumors or post-operational facial pulses, which presume that there is a quite heavy swelling, which leads to quite heavy compression, and of course this swelling does not go away that quickly. If we are uh, talking about less favorable scenario, if the recovery takes long time, which is long, could be one month, could be two months, could be three months before the first signs of facial, returning facial movements will appear, then there is quite a high probability that recovery will be incomplete and that <coughs> there will be some residuals and complications after long-standing well, facial pulse. Now let's talk about what you should do and what you should not do uh, when or if facial palsy 
happens to you. What you should do, you should immediately see a doctor. You should see either an ENT doctor or a neurologist, but in any case, a specialist that has a good understanding of facial palsy and can prescribe you proper medication, can also research what has caused your facial palsy if there is an inflammation, if there is a bacterial infection, if there is a viral infection, or eventually if there is a tumor that is slowly developing somewhere in cerebral, in cerebral pontine angle, angle. So please do your best to see a good specialist. And that specialist will prescribe you medication and give you good advice <coughs> what you should do during the acute phase. Most of the time, let's say the medication of choice is prednisone, which is a steroid uh, that has a major, major main effect on reducing the swelling. We need to reduce compression, and to reduce the compression, we need to get rid of swelling as soon as possible. If there is a viral infection or infection uh, by bacteria, then of course you should take uh, medications against bacteria or antiviral medications. Now, what you should not do, you should not panic. I perfectly realize when half of the face doesn't want to move, when uh, you cannot blink, when the uh, mouth corner is hanging, when you cannot hold in your mouth liquids or food, when the speech becomes slurry, it has a very big impact, especially an uh, emotional impact. But please, do not panic and do not despair. The regeneration happens, starts to happen at the same very moment after the when the damage happened. So your nerve is regrowing, it is regenerating, it is going to reconnect finally with, to your facial muscles. So the facial movements will return. It may take some time. If the favorable scenario uh, is in place, then it may take a couple of weeks. If the damage to the facial nerve was more severe, it may take longer time, maybe two months, maybe three months. But the movements will return to your face. So please do not panic, do not despair. We should realize very clearly that there is no way to quickly switch back your facial nerve. The damage has happened and your body needs time to regrow, to repair the damage. It's the same like if uh, you cut your grass in, the, in your garden, you don't expect it to regrow overnight or even within two or three days or even a week. It takes the time that is determined by the laws of nature. The same is with our body. If you cut your finger, you don't expect it to be completely gone the next morning. So please realize that all processes in our body take time. And there is another very important aspect. When we panic, when we despair, when we feel hopeless, we suppress our immune system. And we need our immune system and we need all the resources of our body in order to recover quicker. Therefore, please stay calm, maintain your emotional balance, do nice things, take a lot of rest because your body has been subjected to quite a heavy impact, also your emotions, so take rest. Don't run, take rest, sleep. If you feel like sleeping, go to sleep. If you feel like doing nothing, do nothing. Do good, positive things and maintain your positive state of mind. This is very, very important and it will improve and facilitate your recovery. In the next part of this video material, I will give you uh, a few useful tips that you could use in order to help your body recover. There is no way to improve it dramatically, but you can do something from your side to make the task for your body a bit easier. Our suggestions are applicable both for the patients who are suffering from acute facial palsy and for the patients who are suffering from residuals and complications of long-standing facial palsy. Suggestion number one, please do not try to force your face into facial expressions. To the contrary, try to find a couple of times per day the time and sit quietly for about 10 minutes. Listen to your face. 
and try to restore the sensory balance between the affected and the healthy side. Try to perceive your face as one whole unit, not as a combination of two separated halves. Suggestion number two. We do not recommend to our patients to use any facial exercises like pronouncing letters, so pronouncing sounds, making some facial expressions, forcing them into uh, or forcing your muscles into making some faces. Why? From our point of view and also based on our experience, doing active voluntary movements may facilitate formation of synkinesis, may lead to contractures of facial muscles and may create some sensation of tension in your face, which of course we want to avoid. The next suggestion, number three, is especially practical and useful for those of you who are confronted with the residuals and complications of long-standing facial palsy. By those I mean rigidity of facial muscles, some pulling sensations in your face, contractures of facial muscles and of course synkinesis. So the suggestion is find a couple of minutes a few times per day, sit quietly and focus on conscious relaxation of your facial muscles one by one. Find on internet on elsewhere the, the facial muscles that we have in our face, learn them and try to focus our attention on relaxing them one by one. Why is this recommendation useful and practical? What we want, the reason is simple, we don't want your brain to develop a habit of over amplifying your facial muscle contractions. We want to avoid that your brain will start making a big deal of every facial movement that you want to make. And your conscious uh, relaxation of your facial muscles, especially if you find a couple of times per day, two, three, five minutes as much as you can allocate to this task, will help your brain not to form that habit and to maintain good background relaxation of facial muscles and that will help you to move your uh, muscles, to move your face in a more proportional manner. Suggestion number four, please do gentle massage of your face with both hands, both sides at the same time, three, four minutes each time. Put a few drops of massage oil or massage gel on your uh, face so you don't pull your skin unnecessarily. Please bear in mind they should do your, that you should do your uh, self-massage with slow, gently stroking movements. There is no need for any special techniques. The general direction of the uh, movements from midline outwards and from lower face upwards. And the final suggestion, please do not use force when you are doing your facial massage. The idea behind self-massage is to create a calm, tranquil state of mind and emotions and to restore the sensory balance between both sides of your face. I hope that this video material will help you to have a clear picture of what to do what not to do and what to expect if the facial palsy happens to you. And I hope that you will recover fully and very soon. Please don't worry, in absolute majority of cases the recovery is complete and only a small fraction of uh, patients who have suffered facial palsy develop some residuals and complications. If that is the case in your situation, please feel free to write to us and together we will decide how to proceed and how to bring back the balance to your face to restore your uh, symmetry of your facial movements and how to bring back your smile.